Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome to a legendary early game playbook video for the Ma Tung's faction. Now this series has been on hiatus for a while and for those of you who are returning to this series, we are revamping our early guide playbook videos for patch 1.5, uh, starting with the 190 start or the Rise of the Warlord. This is the base game, this is the game that everyone has, so we're gonna start things off here. And I also pick Ma Tung's faction to start because Ma Tung was the first early uh, playbook video we did uh, back in the day when the game first launched. And for those of you who have joining us for the first time, this series is where I take uh, all the starting factions and play out their early game to help you understand how to get started with these factions, what make them unique, what make them strong, how to get through some of the difficulty parts of the early game so that you can get started if you want to play on legendary difficulty or even if you're playing on a lower difficulty many of these tips and tricks will apply to your game as well and for those of you who missed out on the earlier version of this guide uh, I have already done all the starts for all the 190 faction on the older patches but obviously a lot of things have changed um, uh, since then and now we're on patch 1.5 so we're gonna quickly go through the faction and if you want more details about the details of these, you know, faction differences and uh, what makes each faction unique, you can definitely check out our old video, which I will put in the description below. And uh, to start, Ma Tung here is a governor out in the northwestern region on the map. You have two counties in the beginning. You are the protector of the west, which gives your faction bonuses such as 10 melee damage for shot cavalry, plus 100 income from silk and spice and minus 10% upkeep for town units. So these are very nice bonuses uh, for a cavalry focused gameplay and it also makes sense because you are starting in the northwest where there are three horse pastures. The 100% income from Silk and Spice is something that we didn't really take advantage of in our old guide. That's something that I will definitely uh, focus more on in this guide because there's always room to improve. And our faction specialization for Ma Tung's faction is actually quite boring because there's actually no faction resource for Ma Tung and he only has something called foraging and supplies where if you encamp you can get more food and there's other bonuses to increase your military supply uh, that can have an impact on your replenishment and morale rate. The playstyle focus in general is cavalry and military supply. Uh, you're kind of on the outskirts of uh, the kingdom and the Tiang or the nomadic tribes in this region of China uh, is there to you know help you out as your unique units you have town hunters count uh, town marauders and town raiders uh, town marauders are available to all generals from all classes starting at rank one uh, town hunters become available at rank three and town raiders become available at rank five these are your normal shot cavalry these are your hybrid um, mixed range and melee cavalry uh, he has a blade on the back that he can use uh, once he stops shooting. Uh, and lastly, this is your typical melee cavalry. Now, all three of these stand out because they have fatigue immunity. So fatigue immunity uh, applies where they never get tired, so you don't lose speed and you don't get penalties to your attacks and attack rate. Uh, basically, all other units in the game will get tired as the battle rages on, and they will move very sluggishly, but these will never slow down. They will never gain any fatigue and will always be fresh on the battlefield and that's what really makes these units stand out and with the recent changes in patch 1.5 cavalry units uh, outside of the melee cav with a shield are much more vulnerable to enemy archers but to make up for that all the cavalry speed have been boosted so all your cavalry are going to be a lot faster than they were on the older patch which make them a lot more harder hitting because speed and the mass of the cavalry determines how much charge damage they do. So it's something that you know really helps you out in the game. So it makes his unique units stand out even more, uh, which is one factor that you might consider when playing as Ma Tung. If you really love cavalry, Ma Tung is really a good faction for you to play as. His unique building is really Luck Laster. Uh, this is a sea down supply line. Uh, this is the replacement building chain for the military infrastructure and you get food from foraging. So basically this is a way you can get food. Uh, it's not very strong. I don't recommend you ever building these. We'll take a look at them in game and I'll explain why. Lastly, you are a governor faction, which means you are loyal to the Han Empire and you can never become emperor yourself. Uh, this means when you become the king rank, when most factions become emperor, 
you will trigger the three other strongest factions on the map to become Emperor to enter into the Three Kingdom stage. And at that point, your job is to hunt down these three false emperor as the governor at Han and take their emperor seats to win the ultimate victory. Now, you do become emperor when you capture a seat, but technically you didn't declare for it, so you are still loyal to the Han. And in terms of unique characters, you start out with Pang De, who is the White Horse General. He's a champion. He's very useful, and he's going to be very essential to our early game strategy here that we'll be employing to try to have a great early game start. And you have your son, Ma Chao, who starts the game out at 14 year old. So it takes about four turns, uh, four years, not four turns, about 20 turns for him to come of age. But at that point, he'll be a very useful general in your faction as well. So with that said, we'll be playing this on Legendary Legendary with 40 minute battle timer. So let's jump into the game. Alrighty, we're loaded up into the game. And our first mission is to defeat the army in front of us like many other factions in the game, and it's led by Wang Du, who is a Yellow Turban General. And when we beat them, we get Taste of Victory, which is three turns of 30 military supply and plus five morale. But the first thing we're gonna do is to take stock of what we have. We have two counties, with Jincheng's Horse Pastures as our capital, and Wu Du Silk Trader as our second county that we have. We don't have a settlement, so when we do capture Wu Du down here, as part of our turn one missions, this will become our new capital. Basically, if you only have counties and you suddenly get a settlement, it will be moved as your capital. So that's kind of our early game goal here. Defeat the army, defeat the town. And we also get a G of the Imperial Guard, a silver item and a common uh, item. It's pretty average. Uh, you can get usually, you can get worse than this, of course. You can also get better than this, like a silver and a bronze. But silver and a common is very good. You always have two bronze items that you stop spawn with. You always have a stone pig and a clay dog to work with. You also have the family spear on Ma Teng, as well as the armor on Pang De, uh, to use as uh, trade assets. That's basically what our Enzeri items are for in the early game. Now we do have our leader here. He is protector of the West. We've gone through these bonuses already uh, when we started the faction screen. And he also has a couple traits. He has Cruel, which has minus four public order faction-wide. This is the only negative part of Ma Teng's uh, background. Uh, he does bring Cruel, which caused a public order issue in most of your commanderies. In the early game, this is fine because you don't mind those uh, yellow turban spawns to farm for experience, item, and gold. Uh, later on, it could be a little annoying, but there's many ways to work around this. Uh, Loyal is kind of just a throwaway trait here. Uh, Careless makes him more prone to ambush attack, 15% more. Uh, another negative is that in his family background, he has poor background, so he loses 25% income from family estate. So you get 500 less gold per turn than most factions. Uh, Pang De is our general that's on the battlefield with us. He is a dear friend of the leader. So that's why you have plus four from friendship within the army, also plus four friendship within the faction leader. The plus one at the end is with the wife, Hua Lian Li. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, it takes away most of the satisfaction issues you run into with many factions on legendary difficulty because of the minus 10 general discontent that's added as a difficulty multiplier. Uh, he's the white horse general. Gives him resiliency, which is nice. Also 12% melee damage for all shock cavalry if he is in a leadership role, uh, which we don't need him to be in. And uh, these are not that good bonus. 12% melee damage is, you know, not that great. Now, he does have the stub stubborn trait, which gives him unbreakable. Uh, it's quite nice. We're going to actually abuse this fact uh, in the early game to our advantage. And lastly, we have our wife, uh, Hua Lanli, who we're going to make into our heir because our kids, uh, if we look at our court screen family tree, we have Ma Chao, Ma Xiu, and Ma Tie as our three sons. They're age 9, 12, and 14. So he won't come of age until four more years or about 20 turns. And Hua Lin Li here can take over as heir for now so that her faction, uh, her bonuses are applied to our faction. And the bonuses that she's really bringing is the clerk background, which gives minus two construction uh, time. So we're going to make her heir. In the long run, we're going to give the heir position back to Ma Chao most likely. And she's going to be used as marriage bait. We're going to divorce her uh, around turn 40-ish and try to get contact with 
uh, Sun Jian's faction down south so that we can marry his son, Sun Ce. Because Sun Ce has a superb background bonus that gives a boost to all charge bonus on cavalry. And since we are a cavalry focused faction, that is something that we need uh, for our faction. Now, previously in our old version of the guide, we had used her as marriage bait with Dong Zhuo's faction to marry Lu Bu, who was registered as Dong Zhuo's adopted son. They took that away in the game to stop the exploit because every faction could try to marry him out of Dong Zhuo's faction, and that exploit was getting, uh, you know, getting kind of, uh, you know, exploited in a lot of games. So the developers took that out. That's fine. We'll just use her to uh, grab Sun Ce when the time comes, and. With our court set up, we have to get done with diplomacy first because we don't want to fight and lose men uh, before we get the deals done. So what we can do in diplomacy is we get a trade route. Um, so we can actually take a look at what trade we have available. You have one available trade route and you can either trade with Dong Zhuo for 407 per turn or Han Sui for 299. So obviously we're going to go with Dong Zhuo here. Now he's willing to offer us 2.6. Uh, with this price, you can first take a look at what items he spawned with to see if there's anything that catches your eye. Uh, there's really nothing that should really sway us. Now, even though both of these items get public order uh, for faction wide, you might think it can help us offset the cruel trait. But like I said, the cruel trait's not that you know oppressive. We can actually just deal with it. Uh, you can also get a military access. You currently just have a non-aggression pack with him. Uh, that's 2.8. You want to do these separately because if you're asking for money, 2.6 will yield us 203. But if we do it together for 5.4, you don't actually get a lot. You get you don't get a lot more, right? 6.4 is 356. So it's better off you do them separately. And the trade deal will actually also boost his income as well. So you can kind of check right now the maximum is his per turn income on turn one. It's 2,390 right now. We asked for 203 of that for ourselves. So let's do this deal right here. And then we follow up this deal with him as well to get a military access. And we want money. This will yield us 227. And you can see the maximum has changed. His maximum actually increased because the trade deal also benefits him. So we get a little bit more money here. And that's all we really need to do on turn one. Now, if you want to look for items, uh, you only have a few faction uh, that's shown to you at the beginning. You only can talk to the Han Empire. You can uh, There's nothing here, so we can cancel that. Uh, and then you can also talk to Han Sui, who is your ally. And that's it. The other two you're at war with, Yellow Turbans and Gongdu. So over here, I can take a quick look. It's a local administrator. Um, nothing too good, so that's perfectly fine. And that's all the diplomacy deals we need to uh, work out on turn one. And we can just start attacking now. Now, we did keep the D, so you could give it to your general. And there's no reason not to, really. Uh, just to make them a little stronger for this fight. Uh, he can take this to give him a little bit more authority to improve satisfaction. And we can give this to our wife. Uh, we're going to have to ask this back soon. We're going to switch over to the one that has more authority. Just to see if we can improve the satisfaction in our faction. Alright, so we're going to save a little bit of time and just delegate. If you uh, are playing yourself, I recommend to fight it. Because you take a lot less casualty. Very simple fight. Alright, we lost 50 in this case. Uh, we captured him. So if you want to capture him and you want to fight, uh, you want to basically beat him up. Don't duel him. Beat him up and then when he's injured and routing, let him run off the battlefield. That improves your chance of capturing him. Capturing him will give you extra 100 gold. Alright, we got Taste of Victory. And our next mission is to capture the town. And you get support of the people. Three turns of public order, faction support. We got experience for winning our first fight. And we just keep proceeding. Uh, did we get any new item for winning that fight? Nope. Okay. Let's take the town. So, 
previously in our old version of the guide, we actually fought this manually and we used our general to run in there and kill off all the units. Very simple, take no damage, keep our armed forces healthy. We're actually going to do this differently for this playthrough because I figure there's a different way to play it and I think this one's even more optimal. So what we're going to do is actually just delegate this for the close victory, saves us a little time. You could also fight it on the battlefield yourself, but instead of using your generals, what I want you to do is use your units. Sacrifice your units in this fight, let them take the damage, let the Z militias and Archer militia take the damage, and try to keep your generals slightly healthy, because the next fight you're going to use your generals a lot to kite. Um, but we're just going to delegate here, which will actually hurt him quite a bit, but it should be okay. All right, he's at half health. He's at half health. Uh, some of them got wiped pretty hard. No problem. We're just going to occupy. And we got support the people. Our next mission is a crucial one. Uh, your economy grows. It's a bonus you get for constructing or upgrading any building in any of your territories. And this is 20% construction cost discount as well as minus one construction time. These are crucial bonuses for your early game economy building. And we're going to abuse this along with the clerk background and assignment to really speed up our economy. And we got experience for capturing our first town, which is great. And you can see that we have this as our capital now. And this army at our doorstep is what makes Ma Teng's uh, faction difficult to play. Because you're the neighbor of Gong Du, who starts out with a very strong army. He has three horseback huntsmen, which are super annoying to deal with because they just have high speed and they kite you. And then you have Yellow Turban Spearmen and their special unit, the Guardian of the Land, that they start out with, which has a ton of armor. Also rank 4, rank 4. And their generals are both level 3, they both have a bronze weapon, it's just a tough situation to deal with, and they have this easy fight in Tianfeng, who is kind of their starting fight, so similar to what we had. And th what that's going to happen is that if you keep your army like this, they beat them, and then they're going to pull away and build up, and you fight them. That's kind of how we uh, kind of approached our uh, previous guide. We let them beat them, we used the men into like an ambush, we beat them over here, and then we just continue from there. Here, we're going to entice them to attack the town on their first turn. And we're going to use the towers in the town to just wipe them out easily. And then once we have them wiped, the rest of the fight super easy. We destroy some more generic generals here. And then we take Han Zhong from Zhang Lu here. And we build up our base uh, out here in the northwest. So that's kind of our long-term early game goal. So to achieve that and to save money, we're going to get rid of most of our retinues. You can get rid of all of them if you want. That's a totally viable strategy. But for the sake of story, we're going to keep the town marauders because, you know, that's our unique unit. They also happen to be our most expensive unit per turn, but we're just going to have to deal with that. So we're going to keep these guys at 299 a pop. We still have a very healthy economy, uh, 2575 uh, per turn. And we're going to end her and entice them to come attack us. Uh, for building, we're going to convert the yellow turban public workshop into our state workshop. The only thing that changes is the discount to blue buildings. And the reason why we do this is I just want to use this to activate the your economy girls mission. So the conversion costs stay the same, conversion time stay the same. There's no discount that could save you money here. So you might as well get this out of the way now. And you can put her in as the assignment and there's a one turn for her to get ready to go to the assignment. So this would be a perfect turn to sync up your builds, your, your economy grows, and your assignment right here. And we're ready to end turn, but before we do that, we do have to mention that we do have a chancellor position available in the beginning, and I highly recommend you to not give it to anyone because you see it's 150 salary increase, 15% income from peasantry is the bonus, and uh, we don't have any peasantry income. We have industry, we have silk, which is a unique income source, and we have the expense here in the horse pasture, which doesn't bring any income in. So there's no reason to get that job. And let's end turn and have him fight us, which is what we've been waiting for. All right, so as we can see, uh, he has defeated the Han army. He took a little bit of damage on his units. Zhang Kai took the blunt of the damage here, and his cavalry are very healthy. And we're going to defeat him with our small army here plus whatever units starting to muster inside the garrison. 
and we're basically gonna loop him around and have him destroyed. Alright, we're loaded up in here and we can check where they're attacking us from. They're attacking us from this door right here. Uh, it could be any door in your game, it doesn't really matter. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna let them come in and uh, we're gonna have the units that are the garrison units just kind of, you know, thrown off to the side here to die. Uh, the reason why I put them here is so that they can walk through these four towers, which will get burned down because the yellow turban units have this raider trait. So once they're idle and stand next to a building, they'll just light it on fire. So there's no way these survive. It's okay. They're not essential to our strategy. What we want is we want our units to run away. So wherever they're spawning, the opposite direction is where you'll put Matong. And if you kept units, you can have the units with him. If you didn't keep units, just have Matong by himself. You'll see why we don't actually need the units. So they're team number one. They're going to run off into the forest. And Pangdu, who has Unbreakable, is going to go to the exit that's kind of close to where they are, but not exactly. Uh, so maybe here. Keep some distance. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to have him come out into the forest towards where they're entering from. Their job is just to go opposite corner. So there's a few reasons we're doing this. Uh, first, let's just hide them in a good place. Uh, the first key reason is to not have all your eggs in one basket. Why we keep these two groups separate. Uh, because let's call these guys too. Uh, because if they do catch up to one of your group and that group get wiped out, you can still use the other group to guide them uh, through your towers to get killed. Uh, the other reason is if there is ever a situation where they're chasing after your guy forever into like the forest, you can always pull vision. Uh, basically, we have them both hidden right now, right? Because they're both in the forest. If we say they're coming over here to chase Pangdu, we can pull them into vision. And then they will stop chasing him because he's supposedly invisible, right? When all your units are invisible, the AI knows where you are. They cheat. But if they, you offer them a visible target, they go after the visible target. So you can kind of save one unit by revealing the unit on the other side. This is a very neat trick you can do uh, when you fight county defenses, right? If you're fighting a county defense, you can definitely use this way. So this is similar to a county defense because the flag in the middle, the capture point, is not something that will lose you the fight. If you have a small city or higher, once you get city walls, the town plaza inside becomes a capture point where if they capture it, there's a 200 second countdown. And at the end of that countdown, you lose the battle. But for this situation where we just have a town, you only lose 10 points of morale when you lose the capture point. You don't lose the fight. So this thing is pointless to defend and they get nothing for taking this area here. So that's not what we're here for. As you can see, they lit that one on fire, but this one got spared, so that's good. All right, they're coming in to attack these guys. These poor guys are gonna die. Pangdu has a very key job of looping the enemy. So we're gonna have him come back here. His job is gonna be to re-enter from where they entered from because we want them to leave through the same uh, exit the entrance they use these guys in preparation for that can actually run to here actually all right they're getting slaughtered right now uh, the enemy cavalry are shooting at our poor units but our towers are shooting at them so it's a win-win Alright, we can do this on three times speed, by the way. Save us a little time. Our purpose is not to force a draw. Alright, there's a lot of county defense battles where we only thing we can do is force a draw. But here, we actually want to beat them. Alright, they're starting to kill off those units. And that's when we start coming here to capture this place right here. The second we start to capture, the AI will respond. Right, they haven't killed everyone yet. There we go. Alright, so we're capturing this point right here. The second we start to capture, they will respond by chasing us. Right, you see how they responded so quickly? The units should follow very soon. And we want them to come out of this exit. 
Hopefully most of the units will follow. Some of them take a while. Now how can we encourage them to come out of this exit? They're coming. It takes the infantry a little bit of time. They're going to wait for everyone. The generals got ahead of themselves. Alright, once they make the turn... Alright, once they come here... We don't want to wait till they're too close. We start running that way because most of the towers on that side. There's no towers on this back side. They'll capture it back. The point is not to capture it and keep it. The point is to catch their attention so they will chase us out of this exit. You see they're burning them down. That's fine. All right, we stand right here so they come out. All right, once they're out, it's over. All right. Let's take them for a loop and see how long they last. I don't understand why they're going so slowly. They're fresh and we're three times speed. Alright, they're entering to the range of this guy. We just want to stay in vision for them to chase us. That's why the more health you can keep on the generals, the, the safer you are, even though you're not really fighting. In case they catch up to you, you can take a couple beatings. But it's fine if he's half health. It's not like he's going to be hurt by morale. So somehow they burned this area down. I think it's fire arrows from the cavalry, but we, we lost a tower. They lost a unit. Now we're going to make them turn over here. At the same time, you can have them start going the other way. All right, you always want to keep maximum distance, like opposite corner with these two. Just a precaution, even though I think we have it. Oh, they showed themselves too early into the open. All right, they're reacting to the vision. So we want to hide them again so they only see Pangdu. So they're hidden. They should come back to chasing us now. Yeah, you see, that's how you can pull them, right? You By playing with the vision of the two opposite side, you can pull their units. All right, these four would do a lot of work on them. They lost most of their cavalry, so they're not going to be that fast. Ooh, they're about to lose their last infantry, though. They're about to speed up. Let's build some distance. Yeah, once they lose all their infantry, they go they go at whatever the slowest speed is. So right now, this guy's holding them back. But the second he starts routing, we're going to have some problems. It's okay. See, they're so weak now that you see how if, if we draw them over here, we can just charge out and destroy them. The goal is not to time timer them out. Actually, the hardest thing to do will be fighting them for 20 minutes. Because then, see, they went, they went super fast. All right, here, don't end. Do not end right now. If you end right now, what happens is that they leave with whatever health they have right now. You want your towers to do more damage to them. And if you could, chase down a few units. Because that's going to make your life easier. Because these guys are still going to be on the battlefield after this. So we can't catch the generals. But you can definitely kill off some of these spearmen. Guardian of the land. I don't think we can catch that one. But we can definitely kill this group. They're going to run away. With a lot of health still. Alright. At least we got to kill them. And uh, then we can end. Nice hero victory here. Alrighty. So we beat them. Hopefully, the most optimal situation is you capture some of them, but here we didn't. That's fine, too. Alright, so we did trigger your economy growth, which is great. 
And our next mission is called Growing Might, is to get two more units than whatever amount we have. This is basically our build up mission, right? To build up our first army. Once we get this build up, we get 50 experience per turn or per season, which is per turn, on all our units for three turns and 10% replenishment rate to help that first army muster up quickly. And uh, we also get our first challenge, which is to destroy Gondul's faction. Five turns of Path of Glory, plus 4k population growth, plus five public order, plus 20%. Income from peasantry. And now we have a few more things to consider. On turn two, uh, because we kept the cavalry, here's where they come in handy. We chase them down. The goal is to kill these two generals. We do not want them to get back alive and heal up. The best case scenario is we capture them, right? And then we execute them. The worst case scenario is we kill them off on the battlefield just so that they. Uh, are put back into their court and not on the battlefield and will cost them a lot of gold to try to resummon these generals onto the battlefield because how good their retinue is. So essentially we'll be fighting lower tier generals with worse units in the future. Uh, we did get the title Iron General for winning a defensive or heroic defensive battle, a decisive or heroic. Okay, Lady Me is in the court. So that's that's new. Uh, that doesn't happen every turn, um, but we, we definitely welcome her. She's an excellent addition uh, to your faction. She's an excellent wife, actually. This is when you can get the divorce uh, papers out. Um, but that's not going to happen every game. What you're going to look for is you're going to look for a strategist because you don't have a strategist in your force and you really want some siege weapons to take down the copper mine. So keep your eye out for a strategist. If you get legendary characters, don't say no to them. She's also willing to spy for us, so she's not a spy. Uh, basically, I don't know why she left Hall 10's faction, but she has great faction-wide bonuses. Plus 10 satisfaction for all characters. That's just amazing. Um, we won't do the divorce right away, because divorce is expensive. So it will slow down our buildup, but we will recruit her for now. And uh, she's easy to keep happy because she has humble, which gives satisfaction, and she has loyal, so both reduce their desire for higher office. So she should be fine. Um, basically, it would cost us a thousand for that. Uh, we will do the chasing first. I believe because we kept these units, this won't be such a hard fight. Actually, the AI I think will win, which is great news. Um, we'll just take the delegate. I think it's fine. Worst case is they're on the battlefield still, which means we have to do more chasing. I'm hoping we capture someone. Oh, we got items, that's what I'm after too, because we can use that in diplomacy. We got two items, cryptographer too. Three items, wow. Alright, they're still on the battlefield, so that's a negative. Got some extra money. Alright, we don't want them to go back and heal. So we will keep chasing until we can kill them all. As you can see, we already knocked one out. We got three items though, so that's excellent. Inspectors, decent, plus three morale from melee cavalry. Um, uh, we also picked this up post-battle as well. Wow, that's a haul. Okay, we're going to put that to use. Uh, what we're going to do this turn, regardless of what happens in the battle, even if you don't get items, you can do this, is to swap... Jincheng's Silk Trader with our Horse Pastor. We mentioned that Horse Pastors got nerfed and they're really more a late game thing when you're running multiple cavalry armies. Uh, right in the beginning, you want more income. Silk income works as a unique income source, a silk income. And the multiplier for silk income is joined by each of the Silk Traders. There are three of them. There's one in Jincheng, there's one in Wudu, and there's one in Hanzhong. So the more of them you have, the each of them will become more lucrative because the income multiplier is shared between all three. So we are going to get all three this turn. First, we're going to offer him a swap. Now he's going to want a little extra with this and that's totally fine because we have items, right? We have the mace and uh, we can actually, I don't want to give him another bronze because hold on, we're going to actually unequipped this item from her and use it as trade. 
So all you need to make this deal work is one of your bronze item, either the clay dog or the stone pig that you start out the game with, and you're definitely going to get at least a common item on your first turn. So with those two, you can secure this deal, or even with just one, right? You can secure it with just one bronze. So one bronze, one common, you get plus 2.7. The only reason we put this point uh, 2 here on the common item is so that I can get a little bit of money from him. Cause point seven would have been given to him for free, right? There's, we can't ask him for a point seven amount of money. There's not he doesn't give us that much, but in this case we can actually ask him for ninety one per turn on top of that. So just to make sure this is a zero, so we get the most out of it, I give him an extra item here. So his silk trader is a level 2 silk trader, which is pretty amazing because ours is only level 1. And Dong Zhuo's is also only level 1 as well. So his will straight up buy uh, with items in this case. And uh, we're not going to offer him any territory to trade, 10.4. Uh, if you didn't get a haul like we did, right? We got quite a haul, right? We got Cryptographer, which I will never use really. And... Um, I don't think we'll be using the inspector anytime soon either. So we're going to trade away both of them. If you didn't get a silver item, don't worry. What you can do in this case, remember how we got these two for free, right? And if we said that we got at least one common for the last deal, we traded away one of these and one common in all your games, you at least have that. And then for this deal, you can trade away your dog and your armor that Pang De is wearing, which is bronze, and also the family spear if it comes down to that. But usually you should get at least one item from the battle that you fought with um, the yellow turbans, and you can probably get another item to just spawn during these turns. If not, if not, trade away your spear and your armor and your clay dog, and you should definitely get this deal done. And plus 0.5, this will just give it to him. He's already paying us a lot of gold per turn. Uh, I don't want to give him another item to force out another uh, payment situation. So we're happy here. All right. So on turn two, we have all three silk traders. And not only that, we also have your economy grow active. So, and the clerk bonus from our current wife. I say current because we found our next wife already. And uh, we're going to just pop these buildings up with the discount active. And over here, we can also upgrade this one more time. So we can only upgrade to level three because um, we um, need a reform for level four, basically. And we don't have that yet. So that's it. We built something everywhere and we have our army chasing them. And we got most of the deal. If you need cash, you can always go sell more uh, non-aggression pack with the hot empire. Uh, they're willing to pay pretty good money here. Well, I consider this pretty good money, I guess. 60, probably 65 even. Yeah. All right, you can always just keep an eye on just what you can sell with different factions for a little bit extra gold. Don't become a vassal. All right. All right, and that's it. We can just end this turn. All right, new turn. Uh, they move farther down which is really annoying because uh, he was marching so we can't actually catch him. But he has to come back this way, which is interesting. So we're going to actually pop over here. If he wants to heal and stuff, he has to come back this way. Uh, the bad news is both generals are full healed uh, because of the way it works when you knock them out. So this fight here will be actually much difficult. So we're probably not going to get what we wanted in the first place, which is actually to remove them from the battlefield. So we just have to deal with them again later. Uh, because we had over 3,000 income at the start of turn, we got the Steward of the Changle, Changle Palace unlocked. Still no strategist. We're waiting on that. Um, we're going to focus all our income on these turns to build up our uh, commanderies. This one's full build at level 3. Uh, this one we're going to build to level 3 as well. And then over here with our remaining cash, which isn't enough to upgrade this, we'll build it in. And uh, that's it. 
we can uh, end turn here. All right, it's kind of cute. Uh, the army they recruited is coming out to rescue their leaders. We just pull back to the town. Because it's a town, we can t pull the same trick if they want to attack us again. So there's no rush to upgrade that. And we finally have some strategists. And we have Lu Fan, who is the perfect strategy for us. Uh, because he has the Gold Master background, which gives another 100% Silk and Spice. As a reminder, Ma Teng has 100% Silk and Spice. So with that, that's 200% Silk and Spice income. So he will be a very good general for us to use here. So let's recruit him. He's level 4 as well, so he's be quite strong in the army. Um, he's also really good. He's a defender of Lu Jiang, uh, Lu Kang here, but um, we'll be passing up on him because of his old age. Alright, so this is now full build as well. So we used our 3 turns perfectly by getting our Silk Trader to full build. Uh, we just have to complete it with this build right here. And we'll be just fine. We won't be uh, recruiting anything right now. We could deploy. So what we want to do for activating our mission. Remember we have the mission to uh, growing might. Right? Which we need two more units. All we need to do is summon him onto the battlefield. And he'll bring two more units with him. You see he's a little mad at us because he's level 4. So there's a desire for higher court position. Uh, you can give him a title. That's the best way to deal with that. And the best title to give him right at this point is general off the left. Uh, you can do it right now. Or actually the best time to do it will be next turn. Because uh, next term you be actually doing most of your recruiting. So let's just keep that as is right now. We'll get a new reform. This is where our faction is really weak. Ma Teng's faction gets this as the free reform to begin with. Plus four military supply and leads to no farther reform. Pretty much a throwaway reform, uh, very wasted. Because we're recruiting army next, we're going to go for this. Uh, another viable route is to get another trade route for more income. And you can also rush for uh, these necessary building. This one's necessary for tier four silk, tier five silk. So getting an early school building to get this reform out is pretty crucial if we're hoping to run a silk income base economy here so consider that and since we're going this way might as well get this branch out of the way too to get uh, onyx dragons quite early as well but since we know we're recruiting army very soon we're gonna do this and uh that's it uh, we're gonna save the rest of our cash uh, to uh, recruit units next turn so let's end turn here. All right, we got Growing Might activated and we get another mission that's ready, quote unquote, completed, but they don't check for the reward until you make some sort of action. So here you might want to just make a deal or something so that the system checks for this condition and you get 20% recruitment cost discount. So you see how we timed it so that you get the 20% recruitment discount the same time you get your replenishment and your uh, bonus experience for units. So the game was designed for you to, you know, recruit your first army and then go capture your first settlement to push it to four because they thought you only have three. But because we traded for another one, we actually have four already. So all we need to do is maybe sell the military access here. Uh, it's not going to sell for much, but that's fine. 36. And I think after deals, they check, right? So they checked for your settlements. So you get this bonus on the same turn right away. And we uh, get another assignment, which we already complete that we can do something to check. Uh, but you can get another three turns of uh, recruitment cost. That doesn't stack, doesn't become 40%. Uh, percent. It just becomes three more turns. So instead of just, uh, actually, it picked up right away. They checked for both right away. So we have six turns now. So that's good. Right, it checked right away. Now we're done with our early game missions. This mission is a long-term mission of just becoming the next rank. Um, not a big deal. So because we have repl uh, recruitment discount as well as you know discount on uh, bonuses on replenishment, we're gonna give Rufan a title to help us get cheap, even cheaper recruitment. And we're gonna try to 
uh, put as many items as we can on the units uh, because um, instinct also gives discount to recruiting and plus why not give it right so the stone dog is good on her so we might as well not go let it go on cooldown and put it on her and then he can use the last stone rat so collectively we get 8% recruitment discount from his instinct 3% from his instinct which pushes us to uh, 11% and then 13% plus the 5% on his title and the 20% here so we're looking at like 43% uh, ish discount for recruiting and what we're going to recruit is definitely siege weapons and archers so you see how cheap it is we get two archers two trebuchets and we need a front line so we're going to get at least four of these uh, we do have money for more yeah let's get a couple more and uh, these guys are expensive so we're not actually going to recruit these we don't have any more discounts for building so it's fine that we actually didn't uh, put a build order in because we ran out of cash and uh, we can actually keep her here and build stuff next turn because we'll have that back on with enough cash so that's it. We have our army build up. They're weak. They can't attack us. Once we get this mustering done, we take this army, wipe out the copper mine, and then we declare war on Zhanglu. Hanzhong is where we're going to plant all our food. Because if you notice, we don't have any food counties. And if we want to upgrade this to a small city, it's going to cost us two food per turn. And we don't have food for that. But Hanzhong is a very unique commandery in that it only has a silk trader as a county. And silk income isn't your typical peasantry, commerce, or industry. So you can build Hanzhong whatever way you want. It's basically a county-less uh, commandery where you don't have to consider synergies with the county. So we're going to use this to build our farms and farm in Hanzhong. So with that said, we're just going to end turn here, let our troops re replenish. Alrighty. Uh, we have characters, Guan Chun. Uh, we don't need to care about that. We're going to upgrade these, um, doesn't matter which, a flat 100, this one's quicker, but we only have one turn on this left, so to optimize here, we want to build this, and then we want to actually cancel her now, so that we got the bonus for it, and we can put her back on next turn, so that when this is completed, she'll be right back on her job. Our army needs about one more turn of, uh, replenishment to be close to full health so we're going to be patient and let them go back it's not a big deal it takes them 11 turns uh, they just don't have a lot of supplies to heal and we'll be able to wreck them at that point so let's continue all right we get to pick between loyalty and duty but since we are uh, loyal we have to pick loyalty which is totally fine there is one thing we didn't do optimally, which is I should have switched the title on him. After recruiting, we should have immediately switched to the general off the right for 5% retinue upkeep discount, which is great. Uh, give him this sword for better evasion on the battlefield. Uh, oh, we should equip this item too for another four instinct to help us reduce cost of recruiting, which is another thing we overlooked last turn. But just basically cheesing out every bit of... Um, discount we can find we're gonna give ourselves reach and then we're gonna go wipe out this army who actually dared to venture into our territory on march so it's a free give me kill right here uh, you could kind of check these characters that are showing up in your pool maybe they're a burn officer you never know yeah there's a burn officer right here so we can definitely recruit him and just stash him as a burn officer in the future oh lady me is actually married we have to divorce her from Taotian and then marry her again. Interesting. Okay, that's going to cost extra. Divorce costs money, marriage costs money. Alright, anyhow. Let's go attack. So, for the sake of time, just delegate away this fight. Super simple. Alright. 
Alright. We capture them. They don't have items on them, so we're just gonna release, actually. Get income. And we're gonna get more income. Pondo leveled up. Um, probably still want to give him reach. It's going to be useful in case he has his own army, in case we have to split them up in the future. And then we definitely want to give him some extra speed. Uh, this one's also good. A lot of good traits we can give him. Uh, skills. Uh, we're not going to trespass into his territory yet. We're going to leave them on the field. They can't beat us. And we're just going to walk towards that base right there. And that's it. Let's continue. Alright, Deltron has spawned, so it seems like Dong is going to die in the event train. We got a trader item, which is good for trade influence boost on the leader. You can give it to him or give it to her. It's the same thing. Um, oh, Luger is in the pool. So we can recruit him as well. Great. Another thousand gone. Complaining like we really don't want him. We, we love to have him. He brought his uh, unique units once again. Uh, very good units. Um, we can definitely use him a bit down the line. But yeah, just keep an eye out. Wh whatever game you play, each game is going to be different in terms of who comes into your recruitment pool. It's not essential. You just need a strategist. Doesn't matter who. They just need to give you two siege weapons to help you take down the copper mine. To help you siege cities. That's all they need to do. Zhang Lu moving out is actually quite interesting. It's going to make us a little bit easier to take down his town as well. So yeah, we go wipe them out right here. Uh, one turn away from that. And we'll just keep our economy going. We forgot to put her back in. <laughs> All those early cancellations, we forgot to do it. But yeah, basically you had to put her back in to enjoy the bonuses this turn. Um, I'm going to hold back from building. It will be the same result, right? If we build this for two turn now, it will be completed in two turns. If we wait a turn, the assignment comes active, we get the discount, and it will be one turn. So might as well wait a turn, not build anything this turn. And let's end right now. Alrighty. Like I said, same end time with less cost. Alright. Uh, we can definitely fight it, but I feel like since we're just doing the guide, let's just rush it through. Delegate this fight. Alright, we actually took pretty hard hits on our units right here. Alright. I think that bonus is when you complete your first commandery. So we got the entirety of Wudu, so we get a little experience bonus. Master of the Hunt, win a battle where one of your character present has a rival that were among the defeated characters. So it seems like all that fighting created a rivalry. Uh, got another title out of it. We're going to be able to replenish up and walk down, destroy them. Once this army dies, Gongdu's faction is destroyed, and we can move on to declaring war against Huangzu. Uh, not Huangzu, Zhanglu. Zhanglu. I don't know why I'm thinking about Huangzu. Um, we are starting to get satisfaction issues. We do have a bit of cash. What we are going to do now that our buildup is uh, pretty well set up, we don't need the clerk bonus anymore. We're going to actually uh, divorce our wife, which is actually a dangerous move because she will actually most likely leave us. So first, we're going to move the item around a little bit. Hopefully her satisfaction bonus that she provide will keep our generals happy. She also has an extra uh, assignment slot here. So first, family tree. Divorce. We want to keep her because that way we can have her to marry Sun Tzu. We need to force her to divorce as well. And then we marry her. There we go. And make her our heir. So it's pretty fair that our ex-wife absolutely hate us. Um, she doesn't hate us enough to leave us yet. It's at three. We might have to give her item to keep her happy enough to stay for another turn. Um, here, we're going to remove. Just to keep it floating. She's going to be fine. 
all the divorce and disinherited will, will slowly go away. And then we can marry her off or use her as marriage bait to marry someone into our faction. Uh, obviously, she's very happy. Uh, I don't know why Tao Tian would banish his wife, but he did. We get extra uh, faction support. We also get extra assignment, which we will put to use here uh, to keep another one of our generals happy because they're just sitting there doing nothing. So we're going to have Lu Zhi come in and take care of our extra income, 75% extra from spice, silk, and commerce. All right. We also get a new reform. So here is where we're probably going to look for the trade route. And we can do it with Han Sui, most likely. Yep, he's kind of landlocked here, so he doesn't find any trade partners. Uh, you see how the marriage options open up now that we have a ruling family who's single? Our ex-wife. Ooh, he's willing to pay a lot for this deal. Well, do you have any items you're not using? Yeah, the items that we gave him. Um, I don't want his son. We'll just take money. He's not that rich, so he's not going to offer too much. Maybe a little bit more than that. Nope, he's 55 is his max. Okay. Alright, so we're good to go. Uh, let's continue. Oh, his army died off. Uh, they didn't attack our town. They just kind of died off um, raiding this area, which is interesting. But we did finish our mission. Um... Which doesn't actually give us too much bonuses. Our new mission is to destroy Dong Zhuo. Don't tell him that, but okay. And Sun Jian died in an event. Uh, Lady Wu will take over. Uh, Zhou Bo. Okay. So our new mission is to, or our new goal is to capture Han Zhong. Alright, we're also not going to tell him we're going to declare war right now. We'll declare war next turn. Catch him off guard, hopefully. To level up. She leveled up, uh, one level up and one angry person on the same person. Um, we will actually give her zeal. There's no reason to take this anymore because she's not a leadership skill uh, person anymore. It dropped a bit more. Hmm. Uh, because of the level up. Okay, but she's going to be fine. It will actually increase now because the remove from office will drop by four. Disinherit will drop by two. So we should be okay. They stayed friends, you know, friendship with faction leader. And uh, that's it. Let's continue. Forgot about the build up part. Um, we're not going to upgrade the mine anytime soon. Uh, there's a reform where we can get discount for that. Uh, we need to upgrade our town into a small city now. And we're going to time that pretty much with the capture of Hanzhong. Four more turns, three more turns. So that's fine. That's perfect. Let's continue. All right. Han Sui really wants to um, become our ex-wife's father-in-law, which we're going to say no. All right. And because the Deltran event triggered, Dong Zhuo actually died. So Dong Min takes over. No big deal. Uh, Zhang Lu retreated back into the town, so we kind of missed the opportunity to catch him off guard, but it's fine. It's a large town. We have siege weapons. We can take them down. So now we just, you know, be open with him. Declare war. And we march our army towards them. That's pretty much it. Maybe we can catch him with the ambush. That would be even sweeter. That'll make it a lot easier on us. See if he falls for that. She is recovering. Yeah, as we can see, she's recovering. And that's it. Let's continue. All right, we get our event, Chaos in the Capital. Dong Zhuo, the mighty guardian of the emperor, has perished at the hand of his adopted son, Liu Bu. War has broken out amongst his officers, all vying to fill the power vacuum left by his demise. Only you and your ally, Han Sui, are placed to rescue the imperial... Uh, the imperiled emperor will you act uh, save the emperor declare war on domain or keep the peace we're gonna keep the peace because it doesn't benefit us at all to fight him right now all right we share all these borders we have a trade very lucrative trade route 
and uh, there's no reason to go against him just yet. Our first enemy that we're going to take on is actually Hansui. Uh Most likely he will backstab us. He tend to do that. Uh, we can wait for him to do that, or if we get done with this area early, we can turn around and backstab him first. So he didn't come out. It doesn't make a difference. We just have a better force, so to save time for this guide, we're just going to delegate away this fight. Oh, big loss. Alright, that's fine. We ended his faction. And uh, with that, what we're going to do is actually, how you want to build up this area here is actually you want to demolish this for the refund. And then you just want the land development and a government support. And then once you have enough food to support uh, two food, you want to upgrade Wudu first into a small uh, city. And then once you have enough food for four food, you want to upgrade Hanzhong to a small city to get a third building spot. And once you get that third building spot, uh, you could go many ways. Um, for your third building, you can build a forge to get items. You can build um, tax collection if you want to just get extra income, which I don't think you need because you actually have plenty of income with this uh, silk trade going on. So you can maybe build a conscription, get some discount for redeployment, get some starting rank. Um, yeah, whatever you feel you need for your third spot. If it's like long term and you have a big empire and you want to reduce corruption, that third spot for this is very good as well. So with this, we're actually going to wrap up our guide. And it's a good thing you don't go to war with Dong Zhuo because you see Li Jue's right here. You would have been clobbered right away. Just keep the peace. He's a good neighbor. He can absorb all the hate from all the factions out uh, east while you now turn on Han Sui. So our goal is to wipe out Han Sui and then we want to start eating up these territories in the north. Wei has a farmland which can give us food. Anding has livestock farm and farmland which can give us food. Uh, basically destroy Han Sui and then take on Dong Zhuo. And the game should be pretty easy once you conquer the north uh, west and making an enemy with Dong Mian at that time will make you a lot of friends out east as well. And then you can kind of pick and choose whichever opponent's easier. Whether you want to go deal with Zhang Ye in the Black Mountains or Zheng Jiang, whoever wins over there. Or just take softer targets, you know, make peace with them. Go down south. Liu Yan's a very soft target. Take over this lucrative region in Shu, including a, a armor smith over here. And then you can just expand from the west to the east and win your game that way. But your early game, the most difficult part of dealing with Gongdu, uh, should be pretty easy with this guide. You definitely don't need to take this much casualty if you're fighting this manually. You just basically bomb out the towers with your trebuchets, and then you tank it with your um, you tank the enemy art range units with these. You shoot the rest with these. Charge in with your generals and cavalry. Should be a pretty clean siege, to be honest. But it's fine uh, to save a little time. We delegated everything. Uh, the key is to trick them into attacking your town and wiping them out right here. It wasn't even so optimum. The optimum play would be to wipe their army out here, and then our buildup of our army can wipe them out. Uh, we did get lucky with Lu Fan, but any general would have done uh, fine. It doesn't have to be a level 4 strategist. A level 1 strategist, some random guy would have been fine. So, hope you guys enjoyed this legendary playbook uh, video here. Uh, the series is coming back. We're going to do one every Thursday. Uh, we're going to do all the 190 starts before moving on to the DLCs. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Comment below to see what faction you want me to do next for next week. And I'll pick one and we'll see you then. Bye!